Hi, this is Michael with Chasco. Uh, just doing a quick run through of post-processing some drone data uh, used an MLED Reach RS Plus receiver as the base and the Reach M Plus for the Phantom 4 Pro. So what we're going to do is take the logs from those two devices, bring them into RTK LIB, in particular uh, RTK Convert and RTK Post process and get the files that we need to re-geotag or update the geotags uh, from the images so that we can get the more precise GPS data. So you can see here this is the site that we're going to process. I've already done a turbo upload just so I could get the, the map and a CAD overlay out to the project but uh, ready to actually post process the GPS data in the PPK right now. So first thing I want to show you guys is there's a lot of software out there. So I actually have a directory set up in my drone OneDrive just for PPK software. So we've got things like Exif Tool, a very good tool to look at the entirety of your uh, Exif data, including the geotags. We've got uh, RTK CONV or RTK Convert and that will actually take the raw UBX or UBlock data or the bin data, whatever you have coming from your system into the OBS and NAV files. Uh, once you have those, um, you're gonna use RTK post and that's going to take the base data and the rover or the drone data and uh, compile them as if you had been running RTK and it's going to clean everything up. RTK plot is what you use to actually see the sky plot of the satellites, the track of the rover or drone, um, and then there's also a lot of other good information out there as far as your local projections and core stations, uh, VRS stations, those kinds of things that you might have in your region. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go into RTK convert I've already set up my directories. So if I go back to this drone directory, I've got my mission set up, and this is pretty typical for what I do. Uh, this is the mission, it's crosswind phase two, and this is where the output ends up, the ortho mosaic, the point cloud, you know, those kinds of things. But I have a separate folder just for PPK. I like to keep the base and the rover or the uh, drone data separate. And then this is the output that we're going to have from the RTK post, from RTK LIB. So you can see here, I've actually already processed it one time, so let's get rid of that stuff. Okay, so you can see the UBX file that came straight off of the MLID. Uh, reach GPS receiver. So we're going to go find those things. Uh, this is RTK convert. I've already set up the time frame. I've looked at the geotags of my images that I've already taken because this is a, a multi-battery mission. So I had to figure out exactly when I started taking pictures and when I stopped taking pictures. My uh, my rover and uh, or the drone and my base were actually logging a lot longer than what uh, the time that pictures were being taken. So we've got that set up. We're going to go find which file we want to convert. And first we're going to do the rover. So basically I just go I find that directory, PPK, rover. There's the UBX file. We're good there. I like to just uh, copy this path all the way down to the rover and we're going to go in here and replace this one and it will update all of the output directories. So we're going to go ahead and convert that. It's going through the timestamps. Done. It's pretty quick. Uh, next we'll go and do the base. UBX file, same time frame. Uh, we're going to change this to base. And you can see that everything is updated. Let's convert that. Good. So we've got our converted files. We can go back and look at 
the OBS or the observation file and the NAV, which is the navigational file for the satellite constellations. So if you look at that in RTK plot, you can actually see the track of the satellites. Same thing for the rover, nav, and OBS. Okay, so at that point, you're ready to go into the RTK post. Back to the PPK software, RTK post, and you can see that we've got the same time frame set up. I like to have those two screens together. Um, and the nice thing about it is it actually saves where you were at. So if I have those two screens together, I can easily just go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So make sure you get everything the same. Um, so the first thing it's going to ask for is the OBS file for the rover or the drone. So we're going to go to PPK rover, bam, OBS. Then we're going to do the base station, same thing, back to our directory, PPK base. And then it's going to ask for the nav file. And there are other formats that you can use. So one of the things that we're looking at is a new Phantom 4 Pro RTK. It uh, has some different file types, but uh, once we find out, you know, exactly what their equivalent it is to, you know, some of these things, then it's going to be the same process. But looking at the nav file, PPK rover or drone navigation file, it's the satellites it saw, and this is all the different, you know, file types that you can have there. So now that we've got those set up, um, this will actually say whatever your first line item was. So mine said rover. So I took rover out of the situation. Um, it shows that it's going to go right to the PPK raw file, but I actually want to send that to the output file. And it's not really easy to change that directory because if you go in, it's going to ask you to rename the file anyways. So I like to copy that file name and then go in and pick the directory I want to be in, which is the output, and then paste that into the output. So now you can say it says output. Uh, the next thing you want to do is go into options. And this is very important. You have to remember to go into this and think about what settings you have every single time because it does save what you did last time. So with the MLID, it is an L1 only device. And that's a, basically a frequency that it receives and it, it talks to the satellites on. L1 and L2, dual frequency, uh, that's something like a, a Topcon Hyper or a Trimble or a Leica, um, some of the more industrial grade receivers. And with the L1 and the Reach M Plus that's on the drone in particular, we're only going to run GPS. So we're only using the GPS constellation. We've got special settings, uh, which you can see from other videos uh, for the M+. These settings I've actually never messed with, and uh, I probably will at some point just to see if I can get better accuracies, but uh, it seems to be okay for now. One thing you do want to really pay attention to is the positions. So we've got the rover. I don't know why they would have the ability to set a static point for a rover, um, that is what it is, but you do set the antenna height. So with the setup that I have with the Reach M Plus on the Phantom 4 Pro, the offset is 0.23 meters from the camera, the sensor. So that's where that comes from. And then uh, if I had shot in the base position with my Topcon or my Reach, um, RS plus, I would have a definite coordinate for that. Uh, this time I'm actually going to use the Rhinox header position. So that is whatever was on, what it was collected in the log from the, the reach base station. But if I really wanted to just dial it in on coordinates for the, the site, if there was some kind of a shift or, you know, something weird going on uh, between the actual WGS 84 coordinates and the site coordinates, then I would want to choose the latitude, longitude, uh, degrees, and then actually put that in. But this time I'm going to actually use what's in the file, 
uh, the Rhinox header, and I do have the antenna offset. This is my base station uh, tripod, 2.088 meters. So everything looks good there. So now I've got my directory set up, I've got my options set up, and go ahead and execute. And it may take a couple minutes to run through this. I can already see that I've got a Q2, which is a float situation. Now I've got a 1, which is a fix. So we can we can look at that in a little bit, um, just to look at the quality of of the data. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to run through it. Um, and I might make another video later to really analyze what was going on there. So we'll go ahead and let that process, and I will be back shortly. Okay, so now we're done with the RTK post post processing of the rover observation, base observation, and the satellite nav file. Um, so what we're going to do is go check just to make sure what we got um, is what we expected. So let me find the drone mission, crosswinds, PPK. You got it. So we do have the positions file and the events positions file. So what we've got here is the, the regular positions file is the full track. That's all the points that the you know the drone shot as it went through the flight pattern through the mission. And the events file is the actual camera triggers. Uh, so the system that I have looks at the LEDs when the camera fires, LEDs go off, it records an event. Um, so there is a little bit of lag there, and uh, I haven't really started accounting for that yet. It's such a small thing on, you know, a 100, 150-acre site. Um, not a real big deal to me. I can do, you know, some analysis and post-processing in AutoCAD or, you know, whatever software I need to use to get that aligned and positioned correctly. But from my experience so far, um, with the tolerances that we have in construction, it's, it's almost non-existent. So yeah, the regular track, the full track, I don't know, that's probably 20,000 points or something like that. And then the events, which was about you know 500 to 600 images. So we're good there. Um, so we're getting really close here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is create the uh, GPX or the track file. So looking at RTK post, KML GPX. So this is the file that a program called GeoSetter is going to use as the track file. So it's going to tell GeoSetter what uh, the GPS coordinates were for those events. We'll use that events file. So you can create a KML that you can look at in Google Earth. You can actually see the pins for those locations in Google Earth, or you can create the GPX for uh, updating or replacing those geotags on your photos. So you can see it defaulted to the full track file. I'm going to get the uh, crosswinds PPK output events file. So we're good there. And it's going to output an events.gpx, which is nice because it's, it's actually updated that for me. Um, this is just if you had chosen KML, it's saying where your Google Earth resides. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that. Boom, done. It's that fast. Um, so overall, that's it. That's going through RTK LIB, uh, RTK convert, RTK post process. Uh, I'm going to leave it right there, and I uh, will make another video for GeoSetter as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.